Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator, and this is episode 118, The Allegory of Aslan. Guys, welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast, a podcast that focuses on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness, to help us grow closer to the Lord on this journey we call life. If you're brand new to the show, thank you for being here. Welcome. If you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, please uh, leave a comment, subscribe to the show, like it, share it with the winds. If you're listening to this on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you consume your podcast, please leave a rating and review. I would very much appreciate that. Uh, please check out the Three Pillars Podcast website, Three Pillars Podcast at WordPress.com. Also, check out uh, the Three Pillars Podcast on Good Pods, the podcast discovery platform that helps little podcasts like me get discovered. If you're over there on Good Pods, make sure you also check out the Sword of the Spirit podcast hosted by my good friend Joe Rusiello. Uh, he does a show every Thursday and Sunday, so make sure you tune into that as well. Tonight, we're going to talk about Aslan. Some of you guys have read C.S. Lewis's uh, The Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, specifically The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But Aslan appears throughout the entire series. We're going to talk about him and how Aslan kind of, he's like an allegory for Jesus. And we're getting going to get into that a little bit tonight. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right in. But first, we're going to start with a quick word of prayer. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We just thank you so much. We thank you for putting stories into our lives to help us to relate to you and to know you more even as young children as we grow into adulthood we can see you everywhere we can see your your beauty your creativity your justice your peace everything around us embodies you in some way shape or fashion some facet of you lord and we thank you for that Lord, I ask that you be with me tonight. Give me the words to say. Give anybody tuning into this the eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that may grow them closer to you. In the most holy name of Jesus, amen. All right. Some of you may, again, have read the Chronicles of Narnia. I'm reading it with my kids right now. We're about halfway through the Voyage of the Dawn Treader. That's book, I believe, number, what, five? It's, uh, what have we got? The Magician's Nephew. You've got Line of Witch and Wardrobe. Um, the horse and his boy, Prince Caspian. So we're, we're, we're on book, uh, what, five now. Phenomenal series. If you hadn't done it, it's good to read to kids. Uh, part of the reason Lewis wrote it as such is to kind of tell the, tell the biblical story, not exactly, but have a, have a character in the, in this series that is a lot like Jesus and who better than Aslan. He's a lion, Jesus being the lion of Judah, a lot of parallels that you can draw into. I'm going to go into about five tonight on, on the episode. Um, Aslan's iconic. He's timeless. Just as Jesus was unforgettable. He's one of the most well-documented humans ever in existence. Um, you know, Aslan's only existent in a, in a small uh, book work of fiction. Uh, but what he represents in, in the grand scheme of things is um, you almost can't put it into words. Um the narrative of the line, the witch and wardrobe, and the whole and the whole Narnia series, it basically starts out. And again, spoiler alert: if you guys haven't read this, this thing's been out forever. So if you haven't read Narnia, you should. I'm not going to spoil anything for you because most of you will probably can do a quick Google search or have at least heard of Aslan at some point in your lives. Um, but Aslan was at the, at the very creation of Narnia. He sang and he spoke and he brought the world into existence. Who else do you know that did that? You know, Jesus is God the Father, is the Holy Spirit. He was there. He spoke the, the world into existence. Just like Aslan did at the very beginning of, of the Narnia series. I'm not going to tell you what book it is. I'm not going to spoil the whole thing for you. But that's one of the similarities uh, you can get into. That's not the main focus, but that's right at the whole beginning of the whole series. He creates everything. He brings order into a, a realm of nothing, a void, if you will. That's what Jesus represents in our life. He brings order to the chaos that is among us. He commands us to order the universe. We're going to get to that in another episode, probably next week if I can remember it. So you guys remember to remember to remind me next week. We're going to talk about order in the universe. I got a good one for that too. But how does Aslan relate to Jesus? Let's go through these five parallels. Uh, the first. And pretty obvious one from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is sacrifice. So the theme of ultimate sacrifice resonates deeply in both Aslan and in Jesus. In The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, 
Aslan sacrifices himself willingly to pay the, the penalty for the, the treason or the traitorous acts of Edmund in, in the book. Well, just as Jesus did for all of us, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the Narnia series, it's, you know, it's a very small scale compared to what Jesus did. Okay, it's, it's very, it's, it's mirrored in the sense that it was a selfless act. He didn't have to do it. Aslan did not have to sacrifice himself for Edmund. He could have been, well, you know, very well, this is the rules of the land. Edmund is, is to die for his traitor's behavior. But Aslan didn't let him do that. He took on the sacrifice for himself and was killed. Jesus did the same thing. He didn't have to die. He was a willing sacrifice. Although a lot of people, they you know, he was set up for it and it kind of played into the hands of the enemy. But as Paul says, if the enemy didn't, if the enemy knew the plan of Jesus that he was supposed to die, they wouldn't have killed him. All right. So all the vague prophecies of the Old Testament came to fruition in Jesus, but they were so cryptic. Even the, the, the demons and the, and the powers of darkness and the devil didn't know exactly the plan. So they just say, hey, we'll just kill this dude for you know, and, and, and set him up as a heretic and all this, this kind of a chaos figure. But even uh, Pilate and the Romans were like, this guy didn't do anything wrong, but they wanted to kill him anyways. So he sacrificed himself willingly for all of us, for everything you have done, you will ever do, everything to your, your neighbors done, the people around the world have done, all the evil in the world, he sacrificed himself for you. So you could be redeemed by his grace and his blood if you would only believe in him. That's the first parallels. His sacrifice, Aslan and Jesus both sacrificed um, in the story in, in Narnia and in the, the history in the world that we live in currently in, in, the, in the case of Jesus. Secondly, resurrection. Again, spoiler alert, Aslan is resurrected because as he states in the book, he said, I was there when the deep magic was formed. I know because I created it basically. You know, I was there when it was written, as he says in the movie, I believe, um, to the to the White Witch. So he was killed by the White Witch, Aslan was, but he was resurrected because of the selfless act that he that Aslan had performed. It broke the spell and broke the curse that the White Witch was trying to put on him, and Aslan returned. He triumphed over sin and death, just like Jesus did. Jesus, when he died, he was resurrected on the third day. He overcame sin and death holding the keys of death and hell when he came back he was triumphant over it this symbolic rebirth in both of these characters symbolizes hope and renewal and it showcases their their resilience in the face of adversity fighting the kingdom of darkness face to face dying the enemy thinks oh i've won i've done it i did it and then boom guess what i'm back and more powerful than ever because they broke the curse of death again, <laughs> as it were. As in the beginning, there was no death in the fall of man, and death was introduced into the world. And you know, uh, cue our kinsman redeemer, Jesus Christ, to come in and save us from our, our condition. And he did that with what he did on the cross. So and then he was resurrected. You know, people always talk about the cross, but the resurrection is the most is, is the important part because he comes back, our Lord and Savior lives. You know, similar, similar analogy. Um, similar allegory with Aslan, he lives uh, because of his selfless act. Jesus lives because he is God, and, he, and he's going to take back death, but he had to do it as a man and go through life as a man incarnate to uh, set us back uh, and break free of this human condition and set us back on that path to renewal. So there's another um, parallel, is resurrection. Number three is love. Love and compassion are at the core of Aslan and Jesus' character. The Aslan's unwavering care for the children of Narnia demonstrates his willingness to protect them at all costs. You see that throughout the entire Narnia series. He may be just in the shadows. He may take a little bit of a different form. In The Horse and His Boy, he takes on the form of like a cat or a big tiger or, a lo or another lion. But you're like, oh, who is this? Is that Aslan? We don't know. Like the whole story, and at the end, you're like, oh, it was him. He was there the whole time. But he had to do some of the things he had to do to either protect uh, the children or or get them going in the direction that they needed to go to kind of uh, set them straight. Um, in the book and in, and in the movie, you know, um, is Aslan safe? Oh, he's not safe, but he is good. 
You know, he's he, he's a dangerous force. He's a, he's a lion after all, Aslan. Just like Jesus, he is good, but he is also not safe because he, he is God. And how many people have actually seen the face of God? You know, in his in his spirit form, nobody, right? We couldn't handle it in our physical bodies, um, but he loves us, and that's what Aslan did throughout the entire uh, series of Narnia. That's what Jesus and God have done throughout history, human history. The love that they share for us, people. Oh well, he's you know the God of the Old Testament is just a a, a a warmongering tyrant. No, everything that God has ever done has been in love, and sometimes love is a form of justice and punishment. Because if you, it's not that it's not that God hates you; He hates some of the actions that you do. It's just like as a just like a parent. I don't hate my kids. Hate's a very strong word. I don't like some of the things that they do. So if I don't like the things they do, I need to take corrective action so that they don't do that again. Because not only will it hurt, it may hurt them, it may hurt other people. And you have to, you have to, as a parent, correct that action. And not don't just let them do whatever they want to. All this gentle parenting stuff. No, you have to take corrective action when there is a something that a kid's doing that is can be self-destructive to themselves or harmful to other people. Or just deviant or defiant behavior in general we have to set guardrails and you have to self set boundaries and you have to keep them in between that you have to let them know that they can't go this far and they can't go this far they need to stay right within uh this that's going to keep them on the on the proper path that is an act of love because you want them to be successful you want them to be contributing members of society you want them to go to heaven with you one day so you set them on this foundation you're not a tyrant you're not denying them things of the world you're protecting them from a lot of stuff that's out there's a lot of laws in the, in the bible that separate the the children of uh, of god the, the israelites and 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 those of us who are in the fold from from other people around and the reason we have these rules is because god loves us because these things are self-destructive you know drugs Drugs, necromancy is in, in the Bible, all the you know, sexual sins and everything like that in the, in the Bible, you know, to include adultery and things like that, those are all prohibited, as it were, because they lead you down a path of destruction. What does adultery do in, in a marriage? It breaks it apart. Okay, what does promiscuous behavior do in a relationship? It breaks it apart. What does drugs and, and, and exce excessive drugs and alcohol and all these things that people get involved into breaks you down in gambling all, all these victimless crimes they they break you down and erode your moral fiber so that to love someone is sometimes you have to discipline them and, and but it is it's also a compassion and a love and i just hey i just love you because you're as a parent to a child you're, i created you as god created us he loves us and he wants what's best for us and he wants to protect us just like aslan did with his the children all throughout the narnia series he wants to protect them Regardless of their background and beliefs, the love that is exuded that through the, the, the story of Aslan, through Jesus and, and God's love for us, it exemplifies a central message that is compassion and empathy. The next point is authority. So just as Jesus is the ultimate authority in Christianity, Aslan is portrayed as a wise and just ruler of Narnia. This authoritative authoritative um, persona that's rooted in wisdom, it's in justice, it's in love, and it's it's a profound sense of uh, responsibility, if you will, and it gu guides their respective narrative, yeah, guides their respective narratives and their teachings. Okay, so the authority that Jesus has, because he is God, he understands the the word, because he is the word, and he pre and he teaches that to people by being that confident, knowing what is right, what is written. What is to to be to come? What is um, foretold? That gives him that authority, not only because he is God, but because he knows what is going on. He knows the pride. He knows he is the fulfillment of it. Just like Aslan, he's the he's the king. He is the ruler. He is his physical prowess, his wisdom, what he does on earth. He lets his his actions are what speak more than anything in in, in the Narnia books. He's not on every single page, but you know he's there from the beginning. From the beginning in the creation of Narnia, just like in the Bible, Jesus is there from the beginning. You just got to know where to look. He's all throughout the Old Testament. You just got to look. That's a, a big theological discussion, but you can kind of get into it. But you, there's the um, Christophanies or the, uh, theophanies all throughout the Old Testament. Let's go look at Angel of the Lord, um, uh, 
most of the time when he shows up as the angel of the Lord, really, when you get into it, um, that is Jesus, right? Uh, Captain of the Lord's host, all these things. Anywho, not to get off the rails. Um, finally, redemption. In Aslan's case and in Jesus' case, there is redemption through both of these characters. Through what Aslan did for Edmund, Edmund was redeemed because of Aslan's sacrifice. He was given a second chance. This highlights the power of forgiveness and those second chances. What Jesus did on a cross gives us all a second chance, no matter how messed up we might be in life. This is the universal, this is the universal truth, is that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And because of what he did, we had the opportunity to be made new. Just like Edmund was because of As Aslan. You see that you see the, the parallels there. It's a beautiful story when you when you get into it and you read it. And if you haven't read the Narnia books, you really need to, to dive in and, and read it with your kids, read it yourself. They're they're not hard reads, they're actually very quick. If you read it on your own, you can fly through them. You can probably knock one out in a day or two, or definitely in a week. Reading with the kids a chapter a night, that's what I usually do, or half a chapter a night, depends on how much we can get through. Um, definitely worth your time. Um, but we are redeemed through the through the work of, of Jesus, what he did on the cross, and all his entire uh, ministry, and on up into his, his, uh, his death, resurrection, his ascension, and what he continues to do through all of us, through the Holy Spirit. We are redeemed by what he did. So to conclude, we know that Aslan's a fictional character, and it's in a children's book series, but the similarities that Aslan has and what C.S. Lewis wrote into the book, so you could tell it to a kid, kind of like what Tolkien did uh, with The Lord of the Rings. You can, you can spot biblical themes throughout The Lord of the Rings, if, again, if you know where to look for. Uh, these similarities serve as a testament to, A, C.S. Lewis's literary genius, but also his love for the Lord. And this provides us all with a unique lens through which we can explore sacrifice, we can explore love and redemption. It helps us to put it more into words through books like the Chronicles of Narnia. So when you draw these connections, you gain a deeper appreciation of both literary and spiritual significance of both the, the figure of Aslan and the figure of Jesus. What do you guys think? That's all I got for you guys tonight. It is a... a, a a beautiful thing to find God everywhere you look. In, in, the, in the pages of a children's book, in a magazine, walking down the street seeing a kind act from one person to another or being that person who does a, something kind for someone else. It affects your mind, body, and soul. And if you can live that example and take that second chance that Christ gives you, what good can you put into the world? A lot, I can tell you that. Guys, thank you for tuning in to Three Pillars Podcast. My name is Chase Tobin. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for the ratings, the reviews, uh, for the, the love you show on Good Pods over there, for visiting the website, for giving me feedback on YouTube and the Facebook channels and on Instagram. Um, you guys have been truly a blessing. So thank you very much for, for giving me this opportunity every week to come on and just kind of put my thoughts out to you all. Um, next week, we're going to talk about order in the universe because I had to remind myself uh, for this. So we're going we're gonna to hit that next week. Um, I think that'll be an interesting topic and kind of to, to, to dovetail off of this, this week's episode. What, what does God do for the order in the universe? Um, again, thank you so much for all that you've done for me. We're going to end with a quick word of prayer as always and kick you guys out for a phenomenal weekend. So without further ado, thank you once again. I'm Chase Tobin, AKA Tobin, the motivator. Let us pray. Heavenly father, we just love you. Thank you for showing up when we least expect you. Thank you for being everywhere all at once and, and for working through us, through the Holy Spirit and everything uh, that he provides and that you provide for us. Lord, fill us full of your peace. Fill us full of your strength. Keep us strong in our faith for you each and every day. If there's a problem, help us to work it out. If we are in abundance, help us to give that to people who are in need and to help them be abundant in their own lives. Lord, Help us to be more than just a, a piggy bank. Help us to use our, our finances as well as our time and our talents to help other people all around us. That way we make the world a better place and we advance your kingdom. Lord, I ask that you be with everyone tuning into this. 
give them that peace, give them that strength, and increase their faith uh, as you always do. In the most holy name of Jesus, amen. Guys, until next week, Tobinator, out.